Hey everyone, Cody from Mac Telecom Networks. In this video, we're going to be looking at another new piece of hardware from Ubiquiti. This past month has been jam-packed with new gear, and I'm happy to announce the U7 Pro. The U7 Pro is the first Wi-Fi 7 access point from Ubiquiti, and we're going to do some testing with it. If you'd like to support my channel, I do now have Ubiquiti affiliate links. Those are in the description below. If you'd like to hire me for network consulting, visit my website at mactelecomnetworks.com, and we do have a Discord server if you're looking to join the community. Now, like always, let's get over to the side table and take a look at what's in the box. Before we open the U7 Pro, I want to thank Ubiquiti for sending this to me to do a video on. Not only did they send me the U7 Pro, but they also sent me a Google Pixel 8 as it supports Wi-Fi 7. Now, the color of the box is a little bit different than we're used to. It's more of a brown color. They used to have it white, and most of their new gear seems to be coming in this. They still do have the pull tab at the top so we could open it up. Now this is what's inside the box. On the very top we have the U7 Pro and it does have this plastic protector over top of it which I'm going to leave on until I have it installed. Now below that we have a mounting template and then we have the professional mount and I'm hoping it's the same mount as with the U6 Enterprise because that's what's currently on my wall. We also have this other mount if we're going to be mounting it to the drop ceiling and then we just have our mounting accessories down below. On the inside of the U7 Pro, we have one 2.5 gigabit ethernet interface, which is powered by PoE+. And then we could see this little slit here. I would assume that is some type of ventilation. And on the other side, we have the reset button for this. On the very top of the AP, we have Ubiquiti's new logo. Now I'm gonna get this installed and then we'll take a look at it in the network controller. Now for easy adoption of the U7 Pro, I've just opened up the Unify Network Controller on my iPhone and we can see that it's pending adoption right down here. I'm going to go ahead and click on it. Now we could adopt this device directly into my UDM SE and then it should do an update and then be available. Now we can see the U7 Pro within my network controller. If we look at the U7 Pro, the status is up to date. So we have no more firmware updates and we can see the IP, the link speed, which is going at 2.5 gigabit per second. There are currently no clients on it and you can see some usage as I was doing some testing and the utilization. So for the 2.4, we do have quite a bit of interference. The U7 Pro is a tri-band access point. So we have our 2.4, our 5 and our 6 gigahertz. Just to take a step back, when I started recording this, I didn't know how much this access point costs, but I do now, and it's $189 USD, which is very reasonable for a Wi Fi 7 access point. Now let's click onto the U7 Pro and look at some of the settings. And this is the overview for the U7 Pro. We could see that we have the 2.4 gigahertz at 2x2, two two, the 5 gigahertz at 2x2, two two, and the 6 gigahertz at 2x2. Two one of the improvements of Wi-Fi 7 is that we could do 320 megahertz, whereas on Wi-Fi 6, we could only do 160. The wider the channel, the more data that could go down it, and we will do a more in-depth video about Wi-Fi technologies. Then we have the same as any other access point, the model IP, Mac, and so on and so forth. Down below, we have our air stats for the 2.4, the 5, and the 6 gigahertz, and then we have our parenting device. So we could see what uplink I'm connecting to, which is the Pro Max 24 on port 23 at 2.5 gigabits per second. Currently, the power that this access point is using is 9.12 watts. Now we have a history page and then we have our channel usage. And you could see that on the 2.4, we have quite a bit of interference. On the 5 and the 6, we don't really have anything there. And we could also do that RF environment scan. Now under the settings, this is where we could tweak our radios or we could go over and click on the radios to do it all at once if we had multiple different access points. But I'm just gonna scroll down and under the six gigahertz, I'm gonna wanna make sure that we have our 320 channel width. Now that we've seen the settings of the U7 Pro, it's time to do some testing. So let's go look at the topology of how I'll be setting things up. First, we have two different internet connections. We have our WAN one and we have our WAN Two. The WAN 1 only does a gigabit down by about 40 up and WAN 2 does 3 gig by 3 gig symmetrical. So we will be using that. We're going to set up a traffic route so that the Google Pixel 8 goes through the WAN 2 so we could see how much performance we do get out of this access point. From there, we have our UDM SE that is going down to our aggregation pro switch. And then we have that new Pro Max 24 PoE. 
Off the Pro Max 24 PoE, we have our U7 Pro, which is connected at 2.5 gigs. And then we have a Synology NAS that's connected at 2.5 gigs. We're going to be testing internet speeds as well as speeds on the LAN. And the Google Pixel 8 will be set to have Wi-Fi 7 on 160 megahertz because that's all that it supports. The next step that we need to do, we need to create a new Wi-Fi network with 6 gigahertz enabled and then create the traffic route for the Google Pixel 8. So let's go back to the UDMSE. Now under our Wi-Fi settings, I'm going to create a new Wi-Fi network. In this, I'm just going to call Wi-Fi 7. I'm going to put in a password of test1234. I'm just going to leave it on the default network and then I'll click on the advanced and then manual. Under manual, we're going to deselect 2.4 and 5 because I just want to try out the 6 gigahertz band. And then we're going to add the Wi-Fi network only to the U7 Pro. Now with the Wi-Fi network created, we need to create that traffic route. I did add the Google Pixel 8 to the Wi-Fi 7 network and we could see it here. It's on the default network and it's going two by two on six gigahertz on 160 megahertz. So let's go back to the settings, go down to routing and we're gonna create a new traffic route. I'm gonna create the entry and I'm gonna select the device. This will be the Pixel 8. We have the Pixel 8 now selected. We're gonna select the interface that it's going to and we're gonna be pushing it down my WAN 2 as that's my three gig by three gig. And we'll just call it Pixel 8 to ISP with three gig. And then we're gonna add that entry. Now over on the Google Pixel 8, you could see that I have Wi-Fi man brought up and we're gonna do a speed test and we are connecting to the Bell network, which is the three gig by three gig. So let's see how fast this could go. And the results were 1,463.8 megabits per second down and 1,065.7 megabits up, which is insanely fast. I've never had a device go that quick on the internet speeds before. Now let's test out the local LAN and this is open speed test running on my Synology NAS. Let's take a look at how quick that will go. And internally we're getting about 1300 megabits per second down and 1365 up, which is extremely quick. Now there is a ton of benefits to switch over to Wi-Fi 7 and this is a wired article. I will put it in the description below, but one of the biggest one is the multi-link operations. This won't be available at launch for the U7 Pro, but will be in a future firmware update. So I'll quickly just read this. Perhaps the most exciting advance in Wi-Fi 7 is multi-link operation. Every previous Wi-Fi standard establishes a connection between two devices on a single band. Even a tri-band Wi-Fi 6 router connect two devices on a single band on a fixed channel. With multi-link operations, it could combine several frequencies across bands into a single connection. A Wi-Fi 7 router can connect to a Wi-Fi 7 device across two or more channels in different bands simultaneously. So this will be huge once it is pushed out. Like I said, we'll do another video going deep dive into Wi-Fi technologies, but for this one, it was more just focusing on the U7 Pro. With the price tag of only being $189 USD, that is fairly reasonable for a Wi-Fi 7 device. If you look out in the market right now, the other devices that are there are very, very expensive. If you have any questions about this video, please leave it in the comments below. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button. If you're new here, please subscribe and hit that bell icon. All right, thanks.